<laughs> Hello, everybody. If you hear any Lion King, it's because my daughter's new favorite movie is Lion King, so pardon that. Um, I'm feeling a bit under the weather today, so pardon the, uh, the voice. Uh, today is Friday. Um, tomorrow I have planned on <clears throat> doing my baseline max efforts uh, with both arms. Uh, that's probably not going to happen. Uh, I'm still feeling very, very tender right at the bottom of the bicep. Um, my brachialis have kind of settled down a little bit. Um, well, actually quite a bit. But <clears throat> right in here is very, very tender. So uh, I don't want to risk an injury, especially in my right arm. Um, there's a lot of things coming up, um, which I'll touch on briefly soon um, in this video, but later. <clears throat> so I'm going to need my right a lot. <laughs> um, my left feels pretty good. Um, everything feels good and tight. My brachialis is still a little bit sore, but nothing bad. Now, for those of you who don't know, I went down to Wilmington to train with uh, Ryan Dunwoody and uh, Scott Clements and, and his group on Tuesday. So I had gotten done with the tournament at uh, Carolina Carnage on Saturday. And uh, I was feeling decent. I knew I was tore up still, but I was feeling pretty decent. I figured I'd do some light pulling and just, you know, pressure up and check different things and all that. And, and yeah, it was, even though I really... I don't know. I probably redlined once while I was there um, and it was in a good spot like Dunwoody and I were working on inside stuff and you know, he was slowly just adding pressure. Um, it, it was still way too much for my right arm to handle. Um, we determined that my pronator was probably really fatigued, not really injured, but really, really fatigued. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what happened when Ryan Belanger hit me and all of a sudden my forearm just went Pow! Um you know, again, no, 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 no discredit to Trevor Beatty. He is um, a warrior and he's super strong. But like, again, normally when, you know, if I hit and I get your hand and you're even remotely close to my level, I'm going to smoke you from there. And I, I couldn't. Um, I know he's, I know he's good, but I don't think his hand is, is that good. His arm is, but I don't think his hand is. And his hand was able to stop mine, which... You know, again, no disrespect to him and whatsoever, nothing but respect, but I really do believe that something was not connected uh, correctly uh, that day after Ryan. And and I'm, you know, going back and, and doing what all of us do, and we study what we did wrong, what we did right, and stuff like that. And, and I honestly think it has a lot to do, when I said, you know, committing my frame more, I got a lot of... Uh, you know, private messages on, on Facebook saying, you know, like, are you going to become an inside puller? You know, I thought you don't like the hook. Um, there's no doubt that I believe that everybody should have a hook, should have a press, should have a, you know, a, every type of top roll. You, you should have that in your arsenal, but your A game is still your A game, right? So yes, I am going to obviously continue slowly to work on my inside game, getting the fundamentals of the hook down, strengthening my inner elbow, strengthening my bicep to handle that kind of pressure, all of that stuff. But that's not what I meant by committing my frame more. Um, if you guys actually do watch me arm wrestle, when I run, I run a lot this way. And when I run that way, my arm gets folded down. So remember when I said I was, I was relying on my hand to do everything because I rely on my hand to stop the match. And I really don't back it up with my arm whatsoever. And I realize that I'm kind of catching it on the bottom of my bicep all the time. And it's just, it's not healthy. And it always winds up hurting the bottom of my bicep. Take Ryan Belanger, for instance. Like I said, damn near zero chance I'm, I'm going to beat him anytime soon, right? But what did I do? I ran like hell to try to get out of his, out of his hand this way. And it put all the pressure when he brought me down right on the bottom of my bicep. Right, and and again, I don't know what happened, but it disconnected something, and it it, fl it inflamed my entire form. Right, rushed blood to the area. My body was obviously like, oh shit, and just rushed a bunch of blood to the area. So something was wrong. Um, and to what extent, I really don't know. I mean, I've got pain when I when I close up hard, palm up, um, but no real pain anywhere else. It's just fatigue and soreness. So who knows, right? Um, 
what I mean by committing my frame is, is probably more side pressure related and, and not even like, you know, just drive to the side, but more static side, right? Using my hand to its advantage, um, or to the maximum advantage that I possibly can. So like, same thing, right? He goes to hit and instead of me running, I more run this way, which makes, you know, him or anybody else fall under my hand. And if I can't crack his wrist, then I'm going down, but I go down as a unit instead of running and catching it on the bottom of my bicep. So it's kind of like more of a, a static, you know, unit where everything stays right and tight and I'm using my frame to back up my hand. And, and again, you know, if somebody does start to take me, I can let them fall underneath me. Kind of a lot more like Giannis Amalins. Um, you know, he's a, a master at a defensive top roll. He's got a really strong hand. Um, obviously he's got a strong arm, but you know what I mean? Like his hand is his main weapon. He commits his frame that way, more side pressure, more, you know, using his elbow and his shoulder to back up his hand without having to dive inside. Um, and again, I'm going to be working on my inside game, so you never know when, you know, I may pull that out in a tournament or in a, in a super match or something like that, but um, that's definitely not my ace move. It probably never will be. My, my hand is always, or at least for the foreseeable future, is, is going to be my leading weapon. It's a matter of using that weapon to its maximum efficiency. So you kind of get my, my drift on that. So it'll be more of a, a, a static threat um, to my opponent, and, and I want them to fall under my hand. Now, if that happens out here, that's fine, but I want it to be you know, way up higher instead of down here on my bicep. Um, you know, it, and all of that will get strengthened up. So who knows, you know, one day, maybe I look more like this, not a king's move, but an open top where, you know, everything is really strong and, and okay. But right now, my bicep can't handle that. So I need to really back it up with, with good fundamental, you know, uh, shoulder stability, um, lat drag, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, uh, and, and obviously good static back pressure. So that's what I kind of meant by that and elbow integrity as well. Um, I gotta stop running in that direction where it puts all the strain on my bicep is what I'm getting at. In any case, um, so, some announcements. Um, I guess I'll start with the stuff that you might be disappointed in uh, first. I will not be pulling in South Carolina states nor will I be pulling in North Carolina states. Uh, Carnage is probably right at the top of my level that I should be competing at right now. <laughs> And I would say uh, South Carolina states and North Carolina states are going to be a serious step above carnage. So, you know, some people have, uh, I've talked to my team and, and some people are fine with going 0-2 or, 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 you know, really not having a chance to place in a tournament. Um, I'm not in a financial situation uh, to do that. And that's just bottom line, right? Like, I, I'm still new, so I work my ass off with this. Uh, and I'm not saying other people don't, but just follow me on this before you start angrily typing whatever. Um, I don't have the finances to just throw money away. Like, I know that if I go to South Carolina states or North Carolina states, no matter how hard I try, and I would try, um, th there's literally zero chance, unless everybody just gets sick and doesn't show up, that I'm going to place, right? Like, the, the, the list of nationally ranked pullers is going to be very long. Um, not to mention the list of state ranked pullers that are way above me are going to be there as well. So, you know, and, and there's no sense in me going to, to, to uh, pull uh, and waste the money. There just isn't. Um, as far as my team goes, the, the one arm on the one person that I do believe belongs um, there would be Nick Johnson's left hand. Um, I believe that his left has reached a point where it belongs competing at those levels of tournaments. Um, but just barely. And, and that's just my honest opinion. I'm not talking shit about my team. I would never do that. I, I honestly believe my team is growing super quick and I'm proud of all of them. But I'm, I'm, you know, I'm their captain, so I'm a realist, right? Now, does that mean that I don't want them to pull? Hell no. If they want to pull, pull. Uh, it, every ready go is good experience and, and it's, it's, it's valuable, right? Um, anyway, I won't be pulling 
uh, or competing in those two tournaments. Now, I will be there to support my team. I will be there to uh, do after pulls and practice table pulls and stuff like that. And I will be there uh, with whoever from my team wants to, you know, show up at, uh, we we'll probably have a, a Airbnb or something like that that we'll all split. And whoever wants to uh, come back to the house for an after, uh, you know, after party like we did with Nick this last time. And like we did with Brandon at Camel City. Um, Brandon and Nick. So anyway, that, that's the long and the short of it. So I will not be competing at South Carolina States nor North Carolina States. So that gives me all of the rest of this month, July and August, aside from practice, uh, you know, practice pulling to basically just work on um, just getting as strong as I possibly can, as healthy as I possibly can. Because September 9th, which is two weeks after North Carolina States, I have a super match with Nelson Smith. A lot of people know him as Nelly. Uh, that's right-handed. Now, the North, or I'm sorry, the Carolina rankings, which covers South Carolina and North Carolina, uh, for this 225 pound list has recently just been cleaned up and changed. Uh, right now, uh, Delfino Islas is number eight, uh, Dean Sane is number nine, and 10 is currently open. Now, Johnny Edwards, who runs the list, and myself has ha have had a conversation. I believe that, um, uh, I'm guessing Delfino made the list because he's beaten Dean Sane and I haven't yet. Um, I had a chance to compete against him in Carnage, but I, I didn't get him in the draw, so. It is what it is. Um, but anyway, uh, I told Johnny, and, and I guess that the stats backed it up, because Johnny really is the group expert. I was just offering my opinion uh, that Gage Bostwick was right outside the list, and then Nick Johnson was right underneath him because Gage did beat Nick at Carnage. Uh, and then the next group of people pretty much were all the same, which was me, Delfino, um, Trevor Beatty, and Nelly, uh, Nelly Smith, Nelson Smith. So Johnny said, well, I'm going to let you four battle that out to figure out who, you know, who belongs on the list and who doesn't. Fair. Fair enough. So it was as of last night when I went to bed, it was 9 and 10 that were open. I woke up this morning to see Delfino at 8. Again, I think he beat Dean Sane a couple of years back. So, you know, hey, kudos to him. He's number 8, uh, which leaves number 10 open. Well, I've beaten Trevor, uh, which I'm sure there's going to be a rematch. But as of right now, I've beaten Trevor and I have a match with Nelly. If I beat Nelly, so my understanding is, since I've beaten Trevor, I've beaten Nelly, and, and Delfino's already on the list, I will become number 10th ranked 225 in the Carolinas. Um, that's great, and kudos, and blah, 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 and congratulations, pat on the back, except I know that there are some absolute killers that are coming for that list that I can't stop right now. One of them being Jonathan Hauser. Um, he's cutting weight, he's going to make 225, and as of right now, I can't move him. So... Uh, my goal at that point is to win my next match, which I will announce uh, shortly when that's going to be. As soon as I can, I will. Um, but I am having a match with Delfino Isla, uh, Islas either at the end of this year or the beginning of next, and that is going to be for that ranking spot. <coughs> Excuse me. So if everything goes well, by the beginning of next year sometime, I should be, hopefully, uh, eighth in the Carolinas, which will put me right behind Nick Johnson's right hand. He's number seven. With that said, my goal is to follow Nick up the list. I do not want to challenge Nick for the list, even if I know in practice polls, somehow, some way, I've gone past him. I do not want to challenge him for the list. Um, I'm telling you guys this right now. He's my coach. I respect him immensely. He's one of my best friends outside of arm wrestling. And he's one of my mentors inside of arm wrestling, even though he's only got a year more than me in arm wrestling. And he's literally about the same age as my oldest child. <laughs> um, he's a really good dude. So I will follow him up the list. The only time I will challenge him is if by the grace of God, him and I at some point are number two and number one. Then, yeah, I will be coming for the crown. He already knows it. And that's, you know, that's what I, that's what I want to do. Um, so that, that kind of lays everything out, right? So there's going to be some awesome practices. Um, I'm also trying to get, because I know Team Silverback was challenging the Carolina Rollers to a, a nice, like, friendly super match series between the two teams. I'm hoping to get them out here September 9th because Nelly is going to be coming here uh, September 9th for the super match. Um, so that'll be awesome. Also, I want to I wanna put this out there real quick so everything's transparent. Um, Nelly has been absolutely amazing to deal with for this match 
Um, he's shown an incredible amount of maturity for as young as he is. Um, you know, he's he's a lighter guy. And the North Carolina list is kind of screwed up in that way. It's not screwed up. It's just, it, it is the way it is, right? If you're 181 to 225 pounds, you're on the 225 pound list. So it, it kind of sucks for lighter guys. Like one of my teammates, Levi Two, he's a really good arm wrestler. <clears throat> but the naturally bigger guys, like, you know, I kind of just made this weight. I'm going to kind of grow into this weight. As I do, I firmly believe I'm going to start widening that gap between me and even somebody like Levi too, who's a phenomenal arm wrestler. And right now we're neck and neck. Um, it's just because I'm naturally going to be a bigger dude. Like I've got a bigger frame than him, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and I, and it sucks for him, right? Unless he drops down to 180, <clears throat> which if he does, everybody on that list better watch out. Cause he's, whew, he's going to be a demon at that weight. Um, but if he stays in the, in the one, you know, 87 to 190 range, which is where he's at now, you know, it's going to be very hard for him to make that 225 list, which really sucks because it doesn't speak to actually how good he really is. Um, even Nick, Nick is like a natural 210, 200 to 210. Um, so yeah, he can compete more easily with the 225 pound guys, but like, I know this last tournament at Carnage, you know, he was bulking, 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 bulking. And on my, we, we weighed in exactly the same. Like, he was wearing shoes, fully dressed, you know, fully bulked up, and he weighed in at 217. I took my shoes off. I was wearing uh, basically swim trunks and a t-shirt, and I weighed 217. So I was cutting. He was bulking. I wasn't wearing shoes. He was. I wasn't wearing jeans. He was. And we weighed in exactly the same. He's a, he's a lighter human being. <laughs> so, um, you know, right now, though, he, he, he'd mop the floor with me, and I know that, but that's okay. Hopefully that changes one day. But anyway, long and short, right? So we got a couple of awesome practices. Like I said, I'm trying to get Team Silver back up here September 9th as well, so that makes it worthwhile for everybody. My whole team will be here to pull their whole team. Um, I know Mike Broom wants to crack up my left again. Uh which I'm glad to hear that he only had a partial tear of his biceps, so good for him. Um, I wish him a speedy recovery. Uh, <clears throat> I've been in touch with Marcus, who uh, broke his bone, his, his arm. Unfortunately, he needs an operation. They're going to put bolts and all of that stuff in there. But I'm humbled, and I'm also grateful. I'm grateful that God gave me the wherewithal to react as quick as I did, and I'm humbled by the words that were, were told to me. Marcus said that the doctor was amazed that there was no nerve damage and you know to basically extend a thank you to me for acting as quick as I did to keep him immobilized and stable. So again, I'm humbled and I'm thankful that God gave me the uh, wherewithal to react as fast as I did. <clears throat> um, I wish him a speedy recovery. It sucks that he had to have an operation. It was where he broke it. I think it was down low. So he needed an operation. Um, and it was a very, very sharp angle. We reviewed the footage, which, by the way, I will be posting the footage as soon as we're done cutting it. It's a long, you know, cut. Uh, we reviewed the footage. We cannot see where he was in a bad position, so I think his arm just snapped. I mean, it's just one of those rare occasions where, you know, the, the, the skeleton wasn't able to handle what the muscles put down. So, um, anyway, uh, there's your update, okay? Um, I may do a baseline max effort with my left tomorrow. If I do, I'll post that. Right now what I'm doing is just working with my bands, um, just doing, you know, green band, nothing serious. I'm doing, you know, 100 to 150 reps a day of pronation rise, and I'm doing some cupping with the blue band, um, and, and that's it. And then I do rice bucket every night for like 10 minutes uh, just to get a good blood flow, just to get everything working and, and you know, right and tight. Um, <clears throat> So I'll, I'll finish that off today. Tomorrow, I will rest on my right no matter what. Sunday, I will rest on my right no matter what. And hopefully Monday, I'll be able to start my next block of working out. Um, and maybe I'll just keep the weights light on my right for just a little while to see where everything is. But anyway, there's your update. Uh, as far as diet goes, uh, if you remember when I started my cut, I was at like uh, mid-228. And then I started my cut and got down to 217. Right now, this morning, you know, basically, it, it's not that I've stopped eating clean, but I've basically, you know, not been counting calories. I've just been eating when I'm hungry and eating as much as I want when I'm hungry. 
Um, I'm up to 2.32 in the morning, so not bad. Uh, I'm kind of trying to reset my metabolism anyway and then go from there. Um, yeah, so my goal is going to be for the summer to get basically as big as I can within the 230-ish pound range so that I can cut down to 225 uh, really, really, uh, you know, easily. Uh, oh, and that was what I was touching on with Nelly. Um, he's going to allow me to, uh, which which I think is awesome because we're treating this as a, as a legit Superman because obviously it's for rankings. Um, well, it's it would be for rankings on my end. He would still have to beat Trevor uh, to, to get on the list, I believe. So that's the way it's being worked out um, because he hasn't beaten Trevor yet. So if he beats me, he would still have to beat Trevor in order to get that 10th rank. I already have beaten Trevor, so if I beat him, I'm on it. At least that's the way I understand it. If I'm wrong, you know, I'm sure Johnny will let me know, but that's the way I understand it as of today. Anyway, he's going to allow me to call him. Depending on where my weight is, I may have to cut for 225 for this match. Uh, so he's going to allow me to call him on Facebook the 8th, right, because we're doing the match the 9th, the 8th around 5 o'clock p.m., as I would at a tournament or another super match, and weigh in. So I'm going to have him on the phone, and I'm going to show him my entire room where you know where i'm doing the scale and be completely transparent and so it's going to be live he knows it's not like the day before or the day after, you know what i mean not the day after but you know it's not like a week before or whatever um he's going to know it's that day and um, i'm not going to be holding on to anything or anything i'm going to be completely in free air and uh yeah and i, I may even take like a, a weight and put it on my scale so he knows that it's calibrated as well just to be completely transparent because i respect the system that much, right? I want to make sure that I'm, I'm not above the 225. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to weigh in for him, you know, between him and I um, on the 8th, and then we're going to have the match on the 9th. And um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, he's a dangerous guy. Uh, he's very, very strong, very young. If you don't know who he is, you should look him up. Um, he trains out with Damien's crew and all that, and I know that those guys know how I pull, so they're going to be training him hard. <clears throat> and he's going to be taking it serious. So um, I can't wait. I really can't wait. Uh, it's going to be a great match. And then uh, I've got the biggest test of my career so far, uh, Delfino, coming up after that. Anyway, uh, oh, and I think there's a tournament in November with Connor Cook. Uh, I think it's going to be in Boone or something like that. Keep an eye out for that. I may attend that one. Anyway, guys, there's your update. Sorry to chew your ear off for so long. For those of you that made it this far, thank you very much. I appreciate you. I appreciate all the new subscribers. I appreciate all the feedback, even if you don't give it to me on YouTube. We were talking about this in Wilmington. I appreciate all the feedback that I get, even in Facebook and phone calls, etc. So thank you guys very much. Let's heal this right up. Still feels pretty good, but like I said, I want to make sure it's right. And uh, let's stay healthy. Take it easy, guys.